Thank you. In this talk, um, I'm going to give a brief introduction to what a singleton is, um, how we can use them to simulate dependently typed programming in Haskell, um, and then a discussion of the singleton's library that helps you do all of this, and then a brief survey uh, of, of issues that will come up while we're doing it. Um, so we're going to start out with this example of length index vectors, which we've all seen, uh, but it'll build up to something interesting. Uh, so we, we start with our, our that type, and then we have this vec type. Um, but let's, let's look at the declaration there. So it takes, the first index is of kind star, so that's a type with values. And then we have uh, something of kind nat, so some of you may be less familiar with this. These are the uh, promoted data types that were introduced by Brent's research that was uh, published earlier this year. And um, uh, so here we have this promoted type nat. So this is now a kind. It has types 0 and suck of n, where n is, is another than that. And now we can use this to index other types like that. Um, so these aren't really types, 0 and suck of n. These are, are sort of type level data. Um, they're used in Haskell level -like types, but there's no terms in them. Um, anyway, they're very useful as, as indices for a gadget like that here. OK, so now that we have this, this length index vector, what are we going to do with it? Um, we want to write this function make even, um, which just takes a vector and if it's of odd length, repeats the first element. Um, maybe not the most interesting function, but, but a good example that we'll, we'll be running through. Um, so let's think about its type. Right? It's going to take that, that length, as we said. Um, it's going to take the vector, and then it has to return some other vector of some length. Well, the only way we're going to know the correct index for the output vector is to use a type family. So we're going to have this type family next even, and that just, if it's an odd number, goes up by one, right? OK, so that's really the only way we can do it. The problem is, is that it is impossible to write a function of this type. Um, and because in that function, we're going to have no way of convincing the type checker that we're doing the right thing, right? Because we need to do different behavior in the odd case than we do in the even case. And, and there won't be a way of convincing the type checker of that. So we really need this type. So we just put the end column right there, and then now we, we know that the value of that nat is going to be the index of, of the vector, as we saw in, in Connor's keynote Monday morning, those of you who were here. Except, wait, that was Agda. This is Haskell. We can't do that in Haskell. That's silly. Um, so we use singleton types. Um, so here is, is an example of a singleton type. A singleton type has exactly one value. Um, and so this singleton type S nat, indexed by one of these promoted nats, has these two constructors which exactly mirror the two constructors of the original nat data type. So if we look at this, so S0, its type is going to be S nat 0, and then any time we use S suck, that type is going to be exactly isomorphic to the term. Right? The example at the bottom of the slide is, it, it demonstrates this, that the type exactly repeats this term. Um, again, those of you who aren't familiar with these little ticks that we're seeing, that's, to, um, that's the, the notation for one of these promoted constructors. Um, so what this does is with one of these singleton types, we have things at the term level, at the value level, that exactly mirror things at the type level. Um, it's worth noting at this point that I did not invent singleton types. They have been around for about 20 years in the literature. Um, there was large work done by Sheen and Fenning. Um, showing how to use singletons to simulate dependent types. Um, Money and Hagenauer uh, published a proof of how we can embed the calculus constructions into uh, a non-dependent language using singleton types. And um, Connor McBride wrote the Strathclyde Haskell enhancement, which does some preprocessing to simulate dependent, type, to dependent types using singletons also. Um, the singletons library that we're going to see in this talk um, works with promoted data types and use it and generate singleton functions automatically, and she can't do that. <laughs> uh, so let's get back to make even. So this is the last type that we proposed, um, and that's not going to work. Instead, we want that. Um, and here we have this <coughs> SNAT used to tie the value level that, that's going to be the first argument to this function with the index of the second type there. That's the right type. Um, OK, so we have the type. Let's try to actually write the function. Um, so it's going to take these two parameters, and, and we, we think about it. Well, the first thing it has to do is it has to branch on whether or not n is odd or even. So we use this function. Pretty straightforward. Is even of 0 is going to be true. True, 0 is, is even. 
one is false, and then for any number greater than that, we just recur, going down two steps at a time. Um, okay, so using that, we can try to write make even. So if it's even, then just return the original vector v. If it's not even, then we use case to destruct this, um, this vector, and then repeat the first element. Okay, let's try that. No, that's not going to work, right? Because the first argument to make even is an S nat, and yet this is even function runs a nat. So that's no good. Okay, next attempt. <coughs> now we're going to use this function forget to turn a singleton nat back down to a regular nat, and then use this regular nat in the implementation of make even. Let's try this. Oh no, that doesn't work either. So let's think about why we're getting this particular error message. In the, in the then case of the if, right, we return v. And, and we see in the declaration of make even that we want to return vec a next even n. But yet v is a vec a n. So in order to, to type this then clause, we need to say that v is, is vec a n and vec a next even n. In other words, n needs to be next even of n. But we don't have enough information to be able to do that. We can't tell that n is going to be next even of n. So what we really need is we, we need a better version of is even. This one isn't going to work. We need s is even. Um, this looks just like the old version, but now it works on singletons. Same code, but just a lot more s's. But let's think about the type of this. Well, it's got to look something like that. It takes a singleton nat, and by the way, I know we haven't introduced s bool, but we can probably imagine what it is. It's just like s nat, but indexed by bool. Um, and but, but what's going to be the return index? Death rule of something. Well, the return index has to be whether or not the parameter index is even. Yeah. But this works. This will type check. So we like it. Um, OK, so we have this. Now, can we apply that and make even? So now, of course, this S is even doesn't return a rule. So we can't just use an if statement anymore. We have to change it over to a case and then have these, these two branches. Um, but now that we have all of this structure, let's, let's see, does this work? Yay, it does. Um, and, and let's think a little bit about why it works. So when we pattern match on this S bool, we get information. This is a Gaddock pattern match. And so when we know that S even of n, S is even of n, is S true, then because the, the return type of S is even, was that s bool is even. We know that is even event has to be true. The types have to match up. Conversely, in the false case, we know that is even event has to be false. So now we can use that plus a little bit more information about really how next even is, is implemented. And then now we can look at it all and see that this will actually work out. Right? Because if we know that is even event is true, then that if that we see up at the top of the slide, that's going to simplify just to n. So we see that n is next even event. Whereas if we know that is even event is false, then we we'll, you know to go to the other one and we'll get suck event and we'd have to go back and look at the definition of, of uh, v cons and all that to see all that works out, but trust me that that works out also. So this is, is the necessary ingredient to make, make even type check. But that required a lot of duplication, right? We needed to take the nat type and we needed to repeat that. We needed to, and then we needed to repeat the boolean type. And then we needed to make this type family of is even. And then we needed a singleton version of is even. And that's a lot of yucky stuff that we don't want to do. So the singleton's library does it for you. If we write this code and put it in these template Haskell, this template Haskell splice, it will generate all of that. So we have the singleton type. We have the promoted version of, it, of is even promoted to a type family. And we have the singleton version of is even. So this is all the same as, as what we saw on other slides, it, it, this code. But it's all automatically generated. OK, so now I want to talk a little bit about how this works under the hood. Um, because although the singleton library makes it easier to do all of this, it doesn't really hide the point. It just makes it a little bit easier to work with. Um, so I want to think about what the singleton would be associated with maybe. Um, so the first constructor is going to be pretty easy, right? So we have this s-nothing, and that's going to be just indexed by nothing. That's fine. Um, the second constructor is a little harder. We know it's going to return 
and it has to be indexed by just of x. And then we could, well, so we need to have this first parameter, and that's going to have to be some singleton indexed by x. But what singleton? It really depends on, the, on that kind parameter k. Hmm, that's a problem. So we don't actually want to encode singletons the way that I've been showing. We want to use a kind indexed data family sing. So a data family is similar to its cousin, the type family, in that it's, it's a type that branches based on what indices it's given. But a data family, instead of yielding a type synonym, it yields um, an algebraic data type. And in, in this case, it's going to yield GetX. Um, it's kind indexed because it actually branches on the kind of its argument, not just the type. And in fact, this particular one branches only on the kind and it ignores the type. So in a perfect world, it would just take K and not A, but GHC doesn't support that yet. So, um, and, and actually when we look at the compilation of Sing, that, that does become something in, in system FC, the internal language within GHC that takes two parameters. So if anyone's played around with kind polymorphism, you've seen every now and then you get error messages, and there's suddenly these extra parameters thrown in. And so Sing would be one of those. So let's see how this, this actually plays out. So here, for now, we have a fairly straightforward instance of this kind of index data family. Looks exactly the same as the last one. Nothing really new there. But for maybe, we can now fill it in, and now it works, right? Because that sing x at the bottom, that, that actually does, um, does the work of, of choosing which singleton we need uh, based on the kind of x. That's exactly what we want. Um, as an example that we've, we've kept the property that we wanted, here, here's an example of, of combining the, these two singletons. And we still see that the type is isomorphic to the term. Um, okay, so that's pretty good. There's a little bit further that we can go to. So going back to the make even example, we would really want to be able to infer that first parameter, right? Because that was redundant. We, we shouldn't need to, to specify that in our code. Um, so what we really want is this, right? We want to just say that that's implicit. But that's not possible. We can't do that. So instead, we're going to do this. Um, so we pass in this implicit parameter using the dictionary of the class sing i, i for implicit. Um, and we see the definition of that class above, that we make this class that has one function sing, which will produce that singleton. Um, and so here, we can see that we don't have to pass in that parameter explicitly. It can just be inferred by GHC. Um, Here's the definition of the function. Nothing really too surprising here, other than we have to now explicitly give the type sing n when we call the sing function, so that it knows what singleton to produce. Uh, and that's also why we need an explicit for all for the n to use scope type variance. Um, some other fun things that, that we've encountered on, on this journey. So Haskell now has kind classes, not just type classes. So what we can now do, and we've done in the library, is we can have the same kind, because some kinds have singletons associated with them, and some don't. So we have the same kind of a variable k of sort box, where stuff, where, where some stuff that we're not really going to get into, because it would be a long diversion to explain why that, how that works. But that's not really Haskell either, unfortunately. We can't really make a kind class this way. Instead, we do this. Um, so what we really want is this is now a kind index type class where we're explicitly ignoring the type. So hidden in ghc.x is this any type. Um, and I put that in quotes because you could never make that declaration. But the idea is that any is a type that inhabits every kind. Um, and so by saying any tilde any, it's, we're just going to ignore that type and instead we have a kind class. Again, the implementation of this is, is beyond the scope of, of, of this talk. But I thought it was pretty neat that Haskell had kind classes. And maybe some people out here think that's neat too. Um, so, some observations as I've been programming with these singletons. Um, using singletons uh, it, it uses techniques that we're already familiar with. You're writing normal functions. And yes, you're putting them in some type of Haskell stuff, but the actual function writing is the same that you're used to. Um, so we don't need to worry about thinking in a logical system and having lots of functional dependencies. We can get away without that. Um, the error messages that you run into while working with singletons actually tell you what's going wrong. There's not really examples of that in the talk, but believe me, they, they tell you exactly what, what's happening, and you can find the, the problems. Um, using singletons, it, it's possible to translate code from Agda into Haskell, and it looks mostly the same in Haskell as it did in Agda. 
Again, you don't have to change the encoding, which is great. Um, as, as a case in point, using these sorts of techniques, we were able to translate much of, but not all of, uh, Connor's keynote from Monday morning into Haskell. Um, the, the last piece that we can't yet do is we can't promote Gaddis yet. So the so natural question would, would come up right now, which is why not just use Agile? I give you two good reasons. One is that we, we retain phase separation. Types are still erased. Um, so we don't have them running around on time. And we have an industrial strength optimizing compiler to compile our code. Um, so this is not everything that's in the paper. If, you, if you're interested in this, I encourage you to look at the paper. Um, the full details of the encoding, all of the other decorations that are needed to get this all to work um, and to work in a variety of programs are there with design decisions explained. Um, uh, there is an example taken from uh, the power of pi that's been translated from Agda to Haskell showing that you can actually make this translation. And on the way, we talk about um, uh, some choices in how you encode certain constraints that, that's pretty interesting. Uh, and then we talk about different ways that GHC can go to even better support this style of program. Um, so thank you very much. And uh, you can install this. It works, but you need GHC 7.6. Um, but it does work with that. Thank you.